Good afternoon, beautiful India. Uh, my name is Kun Kornili, uh, manager for trades for Port of Antwerp International. And as uh, Mr. Kumar said, uh, I will speak about the DNA of Port of Antwerp, operational excellence, maritime security, uh, and uh, safety um, during uh, these challenging days we have right now. Yeah? Um, who we are, eh? because it's important to know as well, uh, Port of Antwerp, Port of Antwerp International, uh, where we are located. We are located in the center of uh, Europe. Eh? It's a small country, Belgium, but Port of Antwerp is uh, one of the largest uh, ports in Europe. Important to know as well, uh, the second largest chemical cluster worldwide. So after Houston and uh, before Singapore, uh, we are the second largest cluster in the world. If we look now uh, what Port of Antwerp is doing these days to cope all the challenges worldwide, uh, um, yeah, we are uh, reconciling people, climate and the economy as a world port. We merge together with our uh, sister port, Bruges, yeah, so Port of Antwerp merged together and that's to have a stronger position of a log logistical chain, uh, sustainable growth and interconnectivity leading on the energy transition. Uh, if, we, if we look uh, what we need to cope uh, these days to be uh, a competitive player uh, in the world, um, Port of Antwerp decided to merge together and to bundle our strengths together with uh, Port, Port of Bruges as well. Port of Bruges for us, uh, the biggest Roro container terminal uh, and as well, uh, yeah, uh, an import port of uh, liquids and oils and paper. And so that's why we merge together to be more competitive uh, against other players and uh, not to work separately, but work as a joint party on this one. Port of Antwerp, together with Bruges, eh, maritime connections to more than a thousand ports. Um, port of Antwerp is a riverine port uh, located in the center uh, of Europe with a 16 meter in and 15.2 out nautical draft. So we are a riverine port and that makes it as well uh, for us a challenging port eh, because we have complex um, situation, uh, it's a riverine port uh, organized by a locked door system and so on. The only terminal, uh, the biggest container terminal of Port of Antwerp right now is the MPET, it's a collaboration between MSC and uh, PSA. And that's the only container port who is not uh, depending on our complex locked door system. That means that uh, vessels can uh, come and go uh, 24 hours a day without having uh, the issues with the locked door system as well. Um, the riverine port, Port of Antwerp, connected, uh, located 80 kilometers uh, inland. So uh, we are in the backyard of 60% uh, of the European purchasing power within a 500 kilometer radius. And so we have connections via rail, uh, a lot of uh, connections via barges, and we have quite complex barge systems, approximately 45,000 moves a year uh, to the interlands of uh, Europe. As well, roads, air transport, and pipelines. Uh, uh, port of Antwerp is connected directly with the port of Seabrugge and uh, the port of Rotterdam uh, via a pipeline network. Last year, we, were, uh, we became owner of that, uh, that pipeline network as well. Um, and that's to become as well uh, yeah, a regulator on uh, the whole complex pipeline network uh, within Belgium connected to the rest of Europe and further on. So it's a unique synergy uh, between the maritime logistics hubs and the complex industry in uh, Antwerp. As you see on the background, uh, you see uh, a schema of uh, the port of Antwerp. Uh, we have the left bank and the right bank. Uh, the biggest container, container terminal is located at the left bank of the port of Antwerp. Another value uh, for the chemistry, uh, more than 5 billion invested in the chemistry six years since uh, 2019. Uh, some quite important players uh, on 
one of the most important players uh, are located in Antwerp, like Ineos, Evonik, <coughs> BASF, Covestro, Standig, Indaver. Uh, it's a chemical recycling of plastic waste uh, owned by uh, Katuna, and Borealis, and Early Kids, uh, who were the biggest investors in that chemical cluster uh, of Antwerp. It's the Belgium's largest eco economic engine. Eh? Uh, we handle more than 231 million tons of freight, uh, spread over approximately 12,000 hectares of land, and at a value of 19 billion of euros, offering 140,003 jobs and uh, spread over 1,000 companies uh, within our port area. If you look to Port of Antwerp, and uh, you need to understand a little bit the role of Port of Antwerp, and we as, uh, we as authority, um, we offer uh, services to our consignees, to our stakeholders who are working in the Port of Antwerp. And that's why we work closely uh, together with our stakeholders. Uh, um, we try to build a community together because it takes two to tango uh, to cope all uh, the uh, challenges we have to cope together as a port community. And that's why we, uh, we work a lot on uh, digitalization, eh? uh, offering as well uh, innovative solutions together with Amaris, who is responsible to do the port community system. Next port, uh, who is developing um, a secured backbone system. And I will explain a little bit more in detail afterwards. Nextport <clears throat> International, it's the international brand of Nextport who is working closely with uh, Volpac right now to uh, implement their solutions worldwide. We look to the transportation uh, angle, eh? Pipelink and Railport. Pipelink uh, is a company uh, who's responsible to do uh, all the pipe lining and all the transfer of goods via the pipeline. And then a Railport because uh, we as Port of Antwerp has challenges as well and so we need to look how we can uh, lower down the congestion on the road by offering a modal shift towards uh, our barge system but as well to the rail. And then the consultancy and training part uh, of Port of Antwerp, the Port of Antwerp International together with APEC. Uh, I am working for uh, as a port as a manager of port projects uh, for Port of Antwerp International and as a lecturer for APEC as well. Uh, APEC is a training center located in uh, our beautiful building uh, in the Port of Antwerp and we have branches in uh, China as well and I'm responsible uh, for a training center at GNPT. Together with the people of GNPT, uh, we have a collaboration and the Ministry of Shipping uh, Indian Ports Association uh, to um, spread our knowledge, to share our knowledge uh, via the training center in uh, GNPT. Um, as they explained before, uh, uh, I was working uh, for approximately 10 years for PSA. Uh, my latest project was as well to do the implementation of the software uh, starting up the Greenfield Terminal of PSA at Bagrat Mumbai Container Terminal in GNTT. So I have a lot of expertise uh, and a lot of uh, good connections with India. If we look to uh, Port of Antwerp International and APEC, and I will, I will go quickly through these slides so we can go to the, to the core of, uh, of the presentation. But important to know, Port of Antwerp International uh, is sharing uh, consultancy, is sharing training as well. Uh, three, three big projects right now, Porto de Asu in Brazil, where we uh, is the first private investment in uh, Brazil, where we were with private uh, companies to develop a greenfield port of, uh, at uh, Porto Rasu. Together with the government of Benin, uh, we have a project in the port of Cotonou, uh, whereby we took over the authority of port of Cotonou uh, within a contract of three, six, nine years where we have put our expats uh, to help uh, the port of Cotonou to become a port of call again. So after nine, nine years, we will hand over again uh, yeah, the port towards the Benin government. Uh, and that's why we are trying to help them uh, to 
to make them more uh, efficient. Building out the port uh, by a master plan that's now uh, getting implemented. And then Port of Dukum uh, in Oman, it's a 50-50% uh, collaboration with the Omani government and together with the DMA concessions and Port of Antwerp International, we are developing as well a greenfield port in that side. The other dots are uh, the training uh, and other collaborations we have worldwide. But these are the three biggest projects. If you look to the figures of 2020, uh, because of COVID-19, uh, we were able to limit the impact thanks to our container throughput. Uh, uh, as I said, the biggest container terminal of Europe is located in the port of Antwerp at the PSA, and, uh, PSA MSC, uh, the MPET terminal uh, located at the left bank. I will go uh, a little bit deeper into the yeah the uh, the challenges we had and what uh, what we we, we did uh, to cope the challenges uh, with the COVID nineteen relations uh, yeah of impact on our operational um, on the daily operational port of Antwerp we we were all the period one hundred percent operationally but we needed to find. Uh, some technical solutions to help our people to work in a safe environment, safe and secure. So you see a little bit the impact uh, on the coronavirus. Uh, we still had a small growth in uh, container traffic. Where do we go as a port authority? And we are a regulator, an operator, a landlord, and we are becoming more and more community builder or an orchestra. Uh, to uh, challenge all uh, the situations uh, we are facing right now uh, worldwide. Excuse me, I went too quickly. Uh, um, so we are quite working hard on optimization of the port space. And uh, uh, we are building out now an extra container capacity plus the optimization <clears throat> at the left bank. And so uh, in order to cope uh, with the growth on the container traffic and other traffic, we are building up now uh, a new container capacity at the left bank. And even at the right bank, uh, in top of the, the figure uh, at the right side, you see a small uh, part we are developing right now to expand uh, the PSA terminal of uh, uh, K930 at the north. So the license to operate and working daily efficient, safe uh, and sustainable operations. And we are working hard on major compensation. And, uh, we need to cope with the challenges we have on that ecological point of view. A soil balance uh, and nitrogen. So we are implementing uh, new solutions, looking for transition in the energy. Nautical accessibility, uh, very important one, <clears throat> because of uh, yeah the quite big amount of uh, vessels sailing, barges sailing towards our port. Nautical accessibility is important as well. External safety. I will come a little bit closer to that uh, in the next slide eh? and shipping service provision and uh, certified pickup that's as well uh, related to uh, the challenges we cope right now uh, with the import of containers and all the security uh, that's around uh, all the security and safety matters uh, by importing containers, importing goods uh, towards the port of Antwerp. As you know, um, we, um, and I think you've read about it in the newspapers, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of bad people are trying to get on uh, specific substances via the port of Antwerp or via the port of uh, Rotterdam. So that's why we need to cope with uh, people as well who have that uh, intent uh, to transport some uh, white powder uh, via the big port in Europe. Important, touch the transition, eh? one way to a climate neutral port by 2050, uh, the digital network of integrated port systems. As I uh, told before, uh, it takes two to tango. So uh, we are working hard together um, with our stakeholders um, to look how a 
we can do trade facilitation by <clears throat> digitalization uh, to make it more secure and efficient uh, to import, export, port and ship goods uh, via the port of Antwerp and the bridge, and then improving the accessibility of the port. Climate neutral port, uh, sustainable energy, hydrogen import uh, coalition, and uh, the, the production of hydrogen with green uh, energy in countries where is insufficient. Solar and wind energy can be generated as well in Port of Antwerp. Import via ship or pipeline and Port of Antwerp as an energy hub. And these are the challenges we have. Uh, so <clears throat> renewable energy transition to that one, a uh, uh, north heat grid uh, residu residual heat is captured and reused by the port and the city. Uh, as you know, the chemical cluster is producing a lot of uh, heat, so that heat can be captured and reused. The largest onshore wind farm in Belgium, in the, uh, in the North Sea, and as well within the port of Antwerp, if I look to uh, my right side, I look to the, uh, the wind farm uh, that is helping us uh, to produce green energy. Solar energy with potential future expansion, power to methanol test project, and ECLUS is a reuse of uh, residual heat by the industry. Sustainable energy, and so we have an open access uh, hydrogen pipeline network. That's why we merged as well with Port of Sea Bruges to make it able uh, to connect all uh, the pipelines in uh, Antwerp. With our partners, as I said, it takes two to tango. We are looking uh, how we can uh, make Port of Antwerp and Zee Bruges uh, a sustainable industry and the storage and the reuse of uh, carbon dioxide with Antwerp at sea. That's why we are developing right now on our uh, old Opal site, the next gen districts. I will share the information about uh, all the projects. If I need to go into detail, it will take uh, too much time. So I will share uh, the information by, via links uh, about, uh, for example, the next gen, about next port, and so on. Eh? So it's a district. Uh, it will be a testing ground, 100% intended uh, for cir circular chemistry. If you look to the commun community building aspect of Port of Antwerp, we are trying to attract universities, uh, startup companies who are helping and try to find innovative solutions on uh, the circular, circular chemistry for Port of Antwerp. So we are aiming to be a climate neutral port uh, within 2050. Uh, so we have the first multi fuel, uh, fuel tankering station with alternative fuels will be uh, active in 2025 with LNG, methanol, hydrogen, and electricity uh, energy. Short power for uh, seagoing vessel, vessels, and we want to uh, lower down the emissions that take uh, place at the day. The, the previous presentation uh, or the previous questions were about the short power. So uh, we are implementing as well uh, by when we are renovating key walls, for example, implementing as well to be ready uh, to offer short power uh, to the vessels who came or come along uh, the key site in Antwerp. And then dedicated LNG flex fuel for bunkering at Port of Antwerp started in March 2021. Sustainable shipping, uh, we have now uh, testing uh, with our energy efficient tugs. Uh, together with CMB, uh, we have testing projects uh, by tugs on hydrogen and methanol, uh, so hybrid patrol vehicles. Uh, as well. If we go now more into detail uh, to the, safe, the safety and the security matters uh, within a port of Antwerp, we are working very hard eh, on our digital network. Uh, it's not only safety and security related to people, but as well to the digi digital network within uh, the port of Antwerp. Uh, so how do we do that? And so we are implementing innovative solutions like, for example, digital twin, uh, digital twin to uh, visualize 
all the data uh, that we can get together uh, via cameras, via uh, systems to gather that data together and use it for operational use. Uh, for example, we are now, uh, well, for an example I can give, uh, as I said, we have a very complex lockdoor system, uh, so we can now um, yeah, do testings by the data we have, and we can uh, see, for example, when a lockdoor system is not working, how we can transfer shift via other ways, and what will be the impact on uh, yeah, uh, situations uh, that become or, or come uh, during daily operations when happening something, defects, defects, and so on. So we can simulate uh, via the data uh, our operational efficiency. We uh, implemented uh, sensors uh, to collect those relevant data set on the key walls on the road. Uh, we are using now uh, the drone technology uh, for specific locations where it's difficult to get information. We will use drones uh, for a safe port to gather information uh, of those places. And we are now uh, doing the implementation of a 5G network. It's a yeah, private net network within the port of Antwerp for operational applications uh, such as automation, stowing tasks, and so on. So it will be a private secure network based on the 5G technology. Digital twin, uh, as I explained, and so uh, we are able to capture uh, the information all over the port. Uh, it's a quite huge port, port of Antwerp, but with that information, we can uh, simulate and look how to optimize uh, the port. As a community builder as well, it's very important to listen to the stakeholders, to try to find innovative solutions, together with uh, authorities, together with universities, together with uh, startups, uh, to be able to cope the challenges we have. Not only on uh, purely the operational uh, facts, but as well on safety matters, security matters, matters and eco ecological matters. Uh, for example, uh, sensors are implemented at key walls uh, to detect and identify uh, objects at the port. Sensors are placed uh, over all the port right now uh, to track, to track uh, unpleasant uh, others, for example. And so we have, and we call them eye noses. So uh, these are the sensors where we are able to <clears throat> measure the quality, but as well uh, to see and to uh, act when uh, there are problems with the air quality within the port environment. So these sensors capture uh, the air and uh, in real time the data will be transferred to our platform to be able to see where uh, we have some problems uh, with air quality within the port. Our drones uh, for automatic, automatic inspection <coughs> using these days and on the 5G uh, network for further digitization of the port of Antwerp. A digital, digital network, eh? uh, autonomous vehicles, environments, and uh, air quality, and drones. So, as I said, and I, will, I cannot repeat it uh, as much, uh, I, no, I need to repeat it uh, a lot of times. We, as a port of Antwerp, it takes two to tango, and that's why we are working with partners uh, around us to be able to cope and to, to be able to implement those innovative solutions. And for example, Tain Port, it's not because we are a port of Antwerp and one of the biggest ports uh, within uh, Europe. We do, we do not work together to find out innovative solutions. So we look uh, as well a little bit farther than our uh, yeah, port, eh? so behind or uh, behind the, the, the borders of the port to work together with uh, ports, together with uh, universities, but not only in Europe, as well in uh, other places worldwide to cope the challenges. And now some strategic partnerships with Nextport and Rombit, for example, and Rombit uh, will uh, be explained a little bit further. 
because Rambit was a company who invented a, a, a solution to help us to cope the COVID-19 uh, issues we had during those two challenging years. Port of Antwerp, um, as a community builder, at trying to, uh, we are always working on uh, new technologies. Uh, it's a space for internal experiments. Port of Antwerp as an, uh, an open innovation platform and accelerating innovation uh, through community building by uh, attracting universities, startup communities, uh, startup, uh, uh, excuse me, startup companies. Uh, to try to find uh, solutions uh, for our um, community within the Port of Antwerp. Okay? So it's not we are working uh, internally and keep our uh, information uh, centralized. No, we work together with the community. We work together on platforms to um, have the ability, the uh, availability to implement uh, new solutions. If we look right now at the safety and security matters we had uh, during uh, COVID-19, uh, we had that 1.5 meter uh, um, distance uh, that we had to keep uh, between the people who were working uh, in, the, in the port. And as you can imagine, it was quite a challenging one eh, because operations on a port, uh, there are a lot of human interactions, still a lot of human interactions, uh, but we uh, remain 100% operational and that's uh, by implementing uh, some technical uh, and innovative solutions. But safety and security, eh, we want to avoid collisions, we want to have safe and secure work situations, uh, and as well, we want to have uh, equipment uh, that can uh, control our equipment over the port. And that's why we are working, uh, working closely together with uh, people like, or companies like Rambit, for example. If you look to this uh, picture, uh, uh, container terminal, RTG terminal, uh, but do you see the people on the terminal? It's quite difficult to spot them. Eh? So in this environment, it's quite dangerous environment because there is uh, the, uh, the possibility of uh, collision between uh, people and machines during these operations. Eh? And if you look uh, to the people, uh, would you spot them? I don't think you saw them in the beginning, but now uh, with the red dots around it, you see them. And that's why uh, Rombit invented a sort of uh, wearable that you can uh, wear around your arm. Um, that wearable is based on the technology of geofencing. And so with the geofences uh, or with the distance control of uh, equipment, we can avoid collisions between people and heavy equipment doing their job on uh, thermal. And for example, if that guy uh, who is sitting down right now at the left uh, is coming into the orange or the red uh, zone too close to the heavy equipment, an alarm will go on uh, on his uh, wearable, uh, and so he's uh, informed that there is a possible danger. So object notification uh, increased situational awareness. And so people are uh, made aware when there uh, will be or can be a uh, possible danger. And that's why with that technology, uh, and that's why, that's why we work very closely with Rombit, we were able to implement as well uh, the 1.5 uh, uh, yeah, perimeter between uh, two people. So when people were working uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, they had as well that wearable off from it. Um, and, excuse me, and uh, they were able to control the distance between uh, people working uh, within the port area. Uh, so if, uh, for example, one uh, guy, came too close for a specific time uh, to another person in the working environment. 
as well, the wearable uh, will generate an alarm um, to say that the distance between uh, two people was not safe. Innovation, uh, if we look to safety and security, as I said, we have very complex um, yeah, organization in the Port of Antwerp with all the lock door system, bridges and so on. Uh, we need to be able to uh, see the quality of those lock doors, of those bridges we are using into the Port of Antwerp. And that's why we implement it. And it has not always been to be something uh, electronical. Uh, and so we uh, improved uh, the, yeah, uh, our maintenance of the bridges and uh, lock door systems by implementing those bolt indicators. Eh? So those bolt indicators can be uh, controlled via cameras, via cameras. Uh, so that bolt indicator will say when uh, bolts are uh, needs to be tied up again, uh, the yellow points will differ uh, in time. And then we know that we need to do the maintenance on our bridges or on our um, equipment uh, using uh, within the port of Antwerp. Another example uh, to make work at the key site more uh, secure and safe eh, is uh, using the sandbags eh, because shippings, yeah, ships who are coming along the sides uh, are throwing the lines sometimes with objects who are not so healthy for uh, the human uh, body. And that's why we have uh, now, uh, for every ship that's sailing along the quayside, we are offering them sandbags. So those sandbags can uh, be added to the lines and uh, it decreases the impact uh, with the people who are working uh, along the key side. So those sandbags are uh, offered right now uh, to ships uh, sailing towards the port of Antwerp. Security. Um, and that's one of our main uh, challenges these days. Uh, and the people who are working uh, in Antwerp, they have a high safety and security risk. There are a lot of people with a lot of bad intentions working uh, within our port neighborhoods. And people are unfortunately sometimes uh, bad influence uh, because of the quick money they can earn by doing bad things. Uh, by importing, for example, cocaine uh, and so on. So uh, it's not only a danger for people who are working within the port. Uh, I was working as a software implementer, so I had access to the databases worldwide of all the Cosmos systems in that time. So uh, if we needed to release or uh, get out some containers or I needed some information about containers, I was able to access that data. The people know it as well. People with bad intentions could came to my house and uh, force me uh, to uh, release containers, release goods from the terminals. Uh, so operational safety and security related to uh, IT uh, is as well very important. And as well, the damage to uh, the public image and reputation of a port. Uh, you don't want to be uh, named as a port where security and safety is bad. If we look to our projects again uh, with Port of Antwerp International, uh, we are helping uh, to do the implementation of safety management systems based on the ISO 45001. Um, we are guiding the people of the IT departments in Cotonou uh, as well uh, by good implementation of the ISO uh, 27001 and people from our department as well are helping on the ISO 14001 regarding uh, the more uh, ecological sites. Eh? Um, so um, Port of Antwerp International offers that uh, uh, these services and uh, we are helping them as well to be a safe and secure environment as well there. If we look, eh, uh, and that's one thing we are working as well very hard on, uh, at the profit para paradigm, a uh, fragmented supply chain, paper-based data duplication, it's not coordinated, uh, you don't have transparency, 
a lot of errors can be made and it's an inefficient and under capacity utilization of the people of the systems you have. That's why together with Nextport, uh, we try to uh, implement now a common shared data platform uh, whereby we try to lower down the end-to-end -end connections where data is transferred between all the parties involved within the supply chain uh, in our port. Eh? So we look uh, at two parties, it's one connection, three parties, two connections while doing data handling, but it's going quickly up to a lot of connections, a lot of transactions of data between people uh, working in the supply chain. And that's why we want to offer a solution whereby uh, the connections uh, are lowered down and eh, decreased to end parties, only one connection. So an export common data sharing backbone where we can uh, share data on an efficient and a secured way uh, with all stakeholder com community. Important is to know that the data you are sharing and the data the stakeholders are sharing is not belonging to the uh, to Nextport. So Nextport is not a data owner. It will only offer the, uh, the yeah, solution to communicate on a uh, secure and efficient way. And that's why I come uh, to uh, the last slide. Uh, if we look to the security and the safety uh, matters we have by importing, for example, containers, uh, we implemented a system that calls CPU and eh, certified pickup. Nowadays, uh, when a container is released from our terminals, a pin code is used, but the problem with the pin codes, pin code uh, is that the pin code can be transferred via all the data platforms, via uh, social media apps like WhatsApp and so on. So, there's a, a very big, uh, there was a very big challenge uh, to cope with the security by sharing uh, uh, and offering the data of the pin code towards uh, the drivers uh, who come to pick up the container from the terminal. And that's why uh, the last two years, uh, the last 1.5 years, two years, we worked very hard on uh, a system used uh, to be cope, yeah, to be able to cope uh, the security issues that we have by uh, releasing containers from the terminal. That's why we implemented now uh, via uh, Nextport uh, the, the the central backbone uh, application that we use uh, the CPU application. So every uh, com communication uh, about the pin code will be done via the central uh, backbone, eh, the CPU backbone of Nextport. So a shipping agent is uh, sending the information to the forwarder about uh, the, the container release. The forwarder will uh, share the information uh, as well uh, with the terminal or with, and with the transport company via that uh, CPU backbone. That's the, uh, that, that transport company can uh, choose a specific driver uh, to pick up the containers, but all the information is uh, arranged and gathered via that CPU backbone. So the truck driver uh, he needs to use is AlphaPass. Uh, it's a pass to be able to enter the terminals in Port of Antwerp together with a biometric fingerprint. <clears throat> he can enter the terminal only uh, when uh, all parties have uh, agreed to release the container. And the container release is then directly linked to that specific driver. So we know each moment when a container is released <clears throat> to which uh, people uh, the container is released. So, and that's why uh, we offer this. So there is no sharing of pin code anymore. It's all done uh, via the CPU backbone of Nextport. To conclude, uh, you see um, Port of Antwerp as an authority um, is working very hard together with the community, together uh, with ports worldwide, together with innovative companies, because we can't do it alone. And, and that's one uh, big 
uh, thing uh, that you need to keep in mind. Uh, you need to work together. Uh, only together you cope the challenges uh, of the future. 